I always get green. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, compose two functions here. And one example, I have two functions that one with a radical and then another one with a rational um, expression. So basically, again, what we're going to do is practice what we did in the, in the last video. But we're just working with some functions that are um, a little bit uh, not as common as we've uh, worked with them before. So again, remember when we have fg of x, remember the way that I like to really rewrite this is f of g of x. And basically what that's saying is you're now taking whatever the function is of g of x and you're plugging that into the f of x function. So in g of x here, we have x minus 2. Um, we don't want to, yeah, we're just going to find this. So therefore, all I'm simply going to do is take whatever g of x is, and I'm going to plug, actually, well, let's go through that. So if I have f of x equals g of x, basically what I'm doing then is f of g of x equals, remember, Remember when we did this before? If I had f of 2 equals the square root of x, well, then wherever there was an x, I'm going to plug in uh, a 2. So f of x equals that. So then f of 2 equals the square root of 2. And you're done. So now if I'm doing f of g of x, wherever I see an x, I'm going to now plug in a g of x. So therefore, that's the square root of g of x. Well, the purpose, again, in this one is we know what g of x is. g of x is x minus 2. So then f of g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 2. Now, to go back and use the formula, all right, we could just, it's the same thing using this notation. All right, it's the exact same thing. And I'm going to continue using the notation that I provided, that we've provided, but I just want you to understand it's the same thing as this. And that's like the kind of the mind frame that I want you to be thinking about is using that as far as like the plugging in. So when we do a problem like this, where now we're plugging in the f of x function into the g of x function. So the f of x function is the square root of x. And I'm going to plug that in for the x in the g of x function. So therefore, we can kind of quickly say, well, g of f of x is then the square root of x minus 2. Right? I plugged in f of x in for the x of the g of x function. OK, so now um, what we're going to do is now we are going to evaluate them. So basically what you can do is, you know, just like we did before, if I have a value in for if I give you f of x equals the square root of x, then I say, what is f of 2? Then you plug 2 in for that function, right? It's the same thing over here. Now, what is f of g of x? Well, what's f of g of 2? Well, we know that f of g of x, that was equal to the square root of 2 minus, I'm sorry, of x minus 2. So if I want to do f of g of 2, I'm just going to plug the 2 in for the x. So therefore, f of g of 2 equals 2 minus 2 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. OK, now let's go into g of f of negative 2. So now we know g of f, ooh, that one's not going to work, g of f of x. Um, so that one's going to be. g of f of x equals square root of x minus 2. So g of f of negative 2 is equal to the square root of negative 2 minus 2. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we can't take the square root of a negative 2, right? So we could also say that the g of f of negative 2 is undefined. Undefined. Or um, kind of depending on what you are going over, you could also say it's 2i minus 2. You could also use the imaginary number system uh, to help you write in the answer. So that's just kind of a basic idea when we're dealing with radicals. Now let's go into rational functions. And again, when using rational functions, it's going to be the exact same stuff. It's the exact same process. Nothing else has really changed. So for the first one, we're taking whatever g of x equals, which is this, and we're going to plug that into our f of x function. Now, um, I didn't really have to use parentheses as much when I did the polynomials um, for the radicals because we kind of had some simple equations. I probably should have, you know, just a little bit. But we really didn't have to. There's really very, very, very little operations going on. This one, though, I would definitely highly recommend that we write use our parentheses. So when we plug something in, we're going to put it around parentheses. So in this first example, f of g of x. Now, wherever there's an x in my um, f of x function, I'm going to plug the g of x function in there. 
So you can see here I have 2 times x. Well, instead of times x, I'm going to plug in the g of x. Well, g of x is equal to x plus 3 divided by 2 and then minus 3. Okay. Now, what's important about this one is, again, 2 is really 2 over 1. So this is like a fraction. So I can now distribute that. So therefore, I have 2x plus 6 divided by 2 minus 3. Well, just like anything else, we should be able to combine these um, fractions. So I'll multiply by my common denominator here. So this is really 3 over 1. I'll rewrite that as a fraction. Multiply that by 2 over 2. So therefore, I now have 2x plus 6 minus 6 divided by 2 because that's basically your common um, number, common term. And then 6x minus 6 is 6 minus 6 is just going to be 0. So therefore, I have 2x divided by 2, which is just going to leave me with x. Okay, So it works out fairly well. Um, now let's go ahead and do the g of x function. Uh, g of x function into the f of x function. Oops, wait a minute, did I do that wrong? g of x and fx. Yeah, so now it's going to be the f of x into the g of x. OK, I'm right. So therefore, we have g of f of x. Now, wherever I have an x in my g of x function, I'm going to plug in f of x. Well, f of x is equal to 2x minus 3. So this example is going to look like this. Um, again, I immediately already had an x. So that's going to be 2x minus 3 plus 3 divided by 2. What you can see is I replaced the x of the g of x function for f of x, which is 2x minus 3. Now I simply just need to um, combine my terms. So g of f of x here. Um, so therefore, I have a negative 3 and a positive 3. That goes to 0. I have 2x two, um, two divided by 2 is, again, just going to equal x. So g of f of x equals x. Huh, this is very interesting. We're going to get on to get into this in later videos. Um, but anyways, <laughs> that makes our life pretty easy because now if we want to evaluate for f of g of 2, we know that answer is just going to be 2. And if we do g of f of negative 2, we know that answer is going to be negative 2 because those, an those compositions just equal x. So whatever we're trying to evaluate for, we're just going to plug those values in. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you um, compose and evaluate the composition of two functions, one with a radical um, function and one with a rational function. Thanks.